Okay, we're going to try to do a video of installation of Sigwin, this time with webcam. Um, not that that's that exciting. You can watch me work here. So we're on the Sigwin website. Um, there's an installation link on the left, but right on the main page we can see uh, the most recent version of this DLL is this, and we can install it by hitting Setup x86 for 32-bit windows or Setup x86-64 for our 64-bit windows. I'm running Windows 8 here. Um, actually on a dual boot with Linux on my office and uh, so we want the 64-bit and you probably do too. I've already downloaded it to save time of the network being too slow and I'm going to open that up here. This machine's pretty old actually. It's about an eight-year-old uh, little box I got up here in my office. I'll give you a demo of it later. Let's see, so into Sigwin, you know, you read the information, you hit next. We want to install from the internet, so we'll leave that default. Again, really leave everything default if you don't know what to do. Um, we want to install it for all users, unless there's some reason you don't want to. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is in the right place. Um, it should be right by default, but I might have done something silly. Um, I'm going to set it to my downloads directory which is users can downloads. Okay, we're good. So the default's probably fine there. I just might have done something weird before. So you can ignore that. Just hit the next. We have a direct connection to the internet, or we hope we do. And it's gonna go and find mirrors where uh, all of the software is installed. Uh, it's not really too important which you choose, but if you're on campus, you want to avoid anything that starts with FTP because uh, Campus usually blocks that kind of stuff, so we'll just go with mirrors.163.com. I've used them before. I'll hit the next button. It's going to download some setup information. We'll wait for that to come down. Oh, there we go. We're all set. So we can choose GCC, G++. Um, the GCC G++ development environment and if we search for it and then it'll show that there's only five of them right now it might change uh, later on in a later version of Sigmund but uh, we see in the Indevel uh, category we have various options we want this one the GCC G++ so I'm gonna just click on the skip button over here it's not too obvious but you gotta click on that skip button so no, it's no longer being skipped we are going to install version 4.8.3-3 in this uh, time of the video. Um, the B and the S here is saying binary and source. We just really want binary. You could install the source if you want. And you could click through here and it actually chooses other versions, but I'll just go with the first one, 4.8.3.3. It shouldn't matter for the purposes of our course. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to go back, sorry. Oh. It's good to show you we can go back. There's one other package I want you to install. C++ install. Anything extra. So I'll go, if I search on make, there's a whole bunch of options here. Uh, we want to go into devel again, and we'll see this second to last one is just plain old make, the GNU version of the make utility. Again, we're going to click on the skip so it shows up that we're going to install a binary. And then we're going to go ahead and do the next. Warning here, um, don't be crazy and just install the whole package from Sigwin because it'll fill up your drive and probably create a lot of conflicts. You just want to install what you need to install. So I'm going to hit the next button. Uh, we'll see that it gives us a whole bunch of things that it's suggesting that we install as well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. We shouldn't change that. It's highly recommended in boldface. We'll hit the next button. And then it'll start downloading and install it. If uh, for some reason this dies, um, you can just go back and then continue again. Just check that those packages are installed. Uh, if you keep that setup binary around, you can run it anytime and remove or add packages back into the system. Um, so I'll just let the magic of video editing make this jump forward in time here in a second. And I'll go work on my MacBook Pro while I'm waiting for the download. And we're back. All right. So 
Let's see what we're working on now. Um, it says it'll create an icon on the desktop, add an icon to the start menu, and we're done. So I'll just say, sure. And that should create our desktop icon for us. There we go. And I'll just close this window. So my system's being very slow today. So I'll open up the Sigwin terminal and it'll eventually open. Right, let's take a look at what's slowing down my system here. I think I just need a new computer. There we go. It's setting up my first initial profile. So I'll get, just give you a couple things here. You need to learn some Linux or Unix type commands at the shell. Um, but basically what you want to do when you're developing using this system on Windows is use whatever editor you want to to edit your code. I use Emacs but you can use uh, Notepad++ or whatever it is you want to use on Windows. And then here um, we can have a bunch of commands that you might want to know. PWD tells me which directory I'm in. I'm in slash home slash can which actually isn't um, my home directory for Windows. So if you want to switch to my home directory for Windows what you'd have to do is you want to switch to SIG drive and you'll notice SIG drive is shows all the drives you have mounted on Windows. Uh, Linux has a, a file system that starts with the root which is that first slash and we can see that I just have a C drive here so I could switch to C and then I could switch to users and then I could switch to Ken and then if I do an LS we can see that we're inside my home folder so I'll just scroll that by. We could actually do that all the way in one uh, actually change directory command so I could go sig, sig drive c users can and I could actually just switch right to my uh, documents folder or I could switch to my desktop folder whatever you want to do or where your files are I recommend sticking things in Dropbox and then your files are synchronized between all systems uh, but we should talk about that another time and then you go ahead and use your uh, compiler. Um, you could use Python or, or G++. If I type G++, hello.cpp here, um, it's going to complain that it can't find that file because I haven't created it yet, and I'll show you that in another video. To exit this, we'll just uh, type exit, and hit the Enter key, exit, Enter, and we're done. So uh, that's pretty well it for installation of Sigwin, and uh, I hope that helps.